Hey guys, Fix It John here. Uh, what we're doing today is we're replacing some uh, fascia board. And the reason why we're doing that is because we have some rotted fascia board and we're also getting a new roof and uh, we don't want the rot, uh, the rotted fascia board left on the house. I'm gonna cut that bad out and uh, I also need to cut this, uh, this gutter out to back to here because it's in the way of the fascia board that's rotted and uh, it, it serves no purpose there anyway. So I'm gonna cut that out so I can slip a small piece of fascia board in there and uh, get that uh, replaced. And there's so this is what I'm working on here. I got some rot. I'm gonna cut this off and uh, I gotta cut some of this. Uh, uh, I've gotta cut this gutter off so I can get up under there and uh, replace some of that rotted uh, fascia board. All right, guys, I have a mask on so I don't have to breathe the uh, shards of metal on this uh, fiber board that uh, does the cutting. Always be careful when you're using a cutoff tool like that. That thing will take your finger off in a heartbeat. Normally what you would do is before you do the roof, before you do the dry in, after the tear off, that's when you would do the fascia board. So that's why it seems so hard because I'm a tight wad <laughs> and I'm trying to save some money here and go ahead and repair the fascia board myself. But this, uh, the pool enclosure, the pool screen does uh, create an obstacle. All right, guys, there's the uh, fascia board I replaced yesterday that was rotted. And I just cut a small piece right there and replaced that. I cut that uh, straight up and down uh, because I couldn't uh, get an angle. You really don't need an angle there. But uh, I cut the 245s and I made a nice, uh, nice edge out of that one. But right See how that drip edge is there? It's right up against the furring strip. Uh, we ordered in some... Uh, taller, uh, longer drip edge, three inch versus a two inch drip edge. That way the drip edge will uh, come up under, come out to the bottom of that furring strip and no water at all get on this furring strip and uh, be pulled back down onto the fascia board. That's where you get your rot. See that uh, drip edge wasn't done properly. All right guys, we've got some rot right here in the front of the house there it is right there it's rotted and uh, we'll probably just replace that whole board right there in the front I'm sure that ends gonna be rotted there too we'll find out here in a minute all right guys what I what I'm doing I'm just gonna take this whole uh, furry strip off that way I don't have a gap here for uh, water and moisture to get into. Okay, guys, sometimes when you replace fascia board, you find more than what uh, you expected. So I had to cut out some rot there, uh, some two by sixes. That was pretty rotted. And uh, there was one over here that was rotted. And what I'll do here is I'll double it up and uh, th even throw a board up underneath it so I'll have something to nail to. And then I'll bring them all the way to here. Uh, I think they had another board, that runner board there because uh, they had cut the uh, rafters a little short. See how it didn't meet up with that one? What I'll do here is uh, I'll run another board. I'll double that board up so I'll have something to run uh, to nail to. And then I'll run it all the way to that board. And I'll even double up that board because that's a little, uh, it's not bad, it's pretty good shape, but uh, I want uh, something a little sturdier to nail to, but uh, that's the rod I'm replacing. And uh, yeah, sometimes you have to go uh, further into it than just the fascia board and the uh, furring strip. Over. There we go. Done. Good 
All right, guys, we've got to cut some wood and replace that wood that we cut out, that rotted wood. We want to cut it one just a little bit longer. All right, guys, there we go. We cut the rotten spot out. So this one, we cut a short one, and what we're gonna do with this short one is go up behind, go up behind that uh, two by six so we have something to nail to. So we'll put that one there, and this one that we cut to the same length as the first one, that one will go right there. And then we'll nail our fascia board onto that. See how that goes, and the fascia board will line right up with that. Doesn't have to be perfect, right, guys. To make this possible, uh, to shoot the wood, uh, nail the wood down, you're gonna need something like this because you can't get a hammer on it unless the uh, the uh, top of the roof is gone. So we're gonna do it from the inside, outside in, and uh, it's a really a handy gun here. Uh, it's a carpenter gun. Uh, for tight spots. I've got one of these ginormous uh, framing guns too, but I can't get it in where I need it. So I'll use this one here. And it shoots it in pretty quick. It's already in. That's what we're looking for. There. Now we have something to nail to. In there. In there. Da -da -da -da. Alright guys, we gotta cut the board and get that closed down. Cut a 45 down here. And we'll figure out how long we need it. Hey guys, Fix It John. Uh, this is uh, as far as I've gotten. Uh, I've been a little busy replacing the fascia board. I still need to put the uh, furring strip up at the top. So when they put the drip edge on, it'll uh, hang over that and drip over the fascia board. But that's as far as I've gotten. Just wanted to show you my 45 there. That's a pretty good tight joint. And that's what you want when you're uh, joining uh, fascia board together. And there's my other 45. This is all new up front here. So I'm gonna have to use two eight footers. Uh, that's what I ripped out and replaced uh, some, with some new two by six and did, did some work inside that. Here. So here's my fascia board. So my cutting table, nothing fancy here. Uh, my circular saw, the only tool uh, saw I have. I'm not much for woodworking, but uh, I can get the job done when I need to. So uh, there it is. We'll cover that up today and uh, finish that. So what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm gonna take my square and I'm gonna strike a line so I can keep an eye on uh, where I'm cutting. Now on this side, I'm gonna strike a line inside the, uh, the knot where it's uh, split out because you, you, you don't want that to uh, uh, allow it to get any water in it or uh, any intrusion at all with water and it will uh, start to rot quicker. So this isn't rocket science guys, it's just uh, a matter of common sense. Nothing fancy here. And it's got two uh, holes here, one for a zero, uh, it's 
got it has a zero and a 45 so if you're cutting If you're cutting at a 45, total 45 degree angle, you want to be at that line there. If you're not cutting any angle, you want to be over here on that side. So that's how you know if you're on line when you start. Yeah, that's our 45 right there. That'll butt up nicely against that corner edge and then we'll be able to slide another uh, another piece of fascia board up under it, and it'll also have a, cu a 45 cut in there. This end here, we're cutting a little more meat off the board because I want to cut that knot out. That'll absorb water and cause it to crack. So it's not rocket science. Anybody can do this that, own a that owns a circular saw. Have the, I have the uh, knot cut out of it, and that's why I cut the knot out. It's a weak spot in the board. All right, guys, uh, I work by myself quite a bit, so uh, I'm good at improvising and uh, making things happen for myself. So, what you need to do if you're working by yourself is uh, take a board. I'm just using a uh, furring strip right here and I'm going to tag it to my, uh, I've got some boards stacked up here because it's not tall enough, but uh, I'm going to take this uh, piece of furring strip here and I'm going to tag it to my fascia board so it'll hold it so I can make that, make sure that corner down there is uh, good and square. So get it best you can down there where you think it's going to go. Take your furring strip, put it up against that fascia board, and put a nail or two in it. That'll hold that in for you. Let me throw a, a, a nail in there real quick. I can move that in a minute. So we got this end, we're holding this end up with that furring strip. We should be able to adjust it. We'll get down here at this end and see how well it's, uh, what it's looking like. It's a little more of a hassle, but sometimes you gotta do it if you don't have a helper. Oh yeah, that's almost perfect. you shoot a nail especially these light nails uh, don't just shoot it straight in a nail has more holding power if you angle the nail so I mean if you angle up like that and then angle down like this if weather or storm or uh, winds blowing it's going to take more force pull those nails against its, against themselves to pull the board out. If they're straight in, the, the, the board can come off a lot easier. One up, one down, one up, one down, one up, one down. So yeah, never straight in unless you can help it. And my little stand here, voila, it's gone. But uh, what I was saying, guys, about my furring strip, this has the 45 down. Now the other one will slip right up under it. That way it'll be a held down 45. And then I'll take my furring strip and I won't, I won't meet them here together like that. I'll overlap it like that and that'll get more hold down uh, strength this uh, fascia board so what I'm gonna do now guys is I'm gonna take this uh, ladder and I'm gonna take this board down and I'll show you how to do that take you a 
a uh, crowbar. So we'll just get put this crowbar up in here, and that way I'll be able to inspect that board behind it. Good, no termites. All right, guys, there it is after it's uh, nailed in. It's 245s together. And for additional holding power, I'll take a furring strip and uh, I'll set it right over top of it. Instead of cutting it here, making a joint here too, that's uh, tying it in. That way you can tie it in a little better. Got some of it done. I still have to put the furring strip and still put a uh, new board on that side. That was uh, rotted quite a bit, so. Yeah, nice tight joint there, and that's what you're looking for. Nice tight joint to keep the water out. So not too bad for a uh, uh, DIY guy. So, you know, if I can do it, I'm not a carpenter. If I can do it, you, can, you guys can do it too. And I'm just here to give you guys a little confidence and save some money. Uh, I think, uh, the roofing company wanted like uh, $12 a foot uh, installed, new fascia board, and uh, that can rack up some dough, so. Thought I'd and up there, there's a little gap, but uh, you're not gonna see that once I get it painted. Uh, I didn't film uh, stripping this stuff off yesterday because uh, it was all I could do to get it off. I mean, I was holding myself up there on the roof with one hand and uh, taking the fascia board off with the other. So there it is, guys. Uh, that's the peak. That was, It was rotted here at the end. You could barely see it. You couldn't see it. I, I poked it with a screwdriver and uh, I didn't want it falling out in two or three years and then uh, having a beautiful roof and uh, ugly fascia boards. Hey guys, this is John. I bought me a tool belt the other day. Uh, it's not very functional. You put the hammer there and then when you walk, you bang your leg on it. So well, my finishing nail gun went to put the uh, seal busted in it. So I gotta do this all by hand again. Uh, now on this furry trip onto this uh, pastry board. I can have somebody to hold it for me. I met somebody that uh, furry strip. All right, I just got her tagged in there. That's just a little bit of an underhang, and then, but I'll. But I'll come back down to this end, tack that up, pull that nail and shove that up again so there's no uh, underhang and it'll be nice and square. Some of these, uh, it's like two, two and a half inch uh, nails. Now when you're uh, doing the fascia board here, when the water's running down, you wanna do the undercut. You want the 45 on the bottom side. So the water runs down here and over the uh, 45. Now, if you have it flip-flopped, what'll happen is the water will come down and inside the 45 and have a tendency to rot the uh, wood out a lot quicker, so. And, and that's what I'm talking about right there underneath. See the water, if the water was running down and it runs down, it's going to have a tendency to run over the other fascia board. Now, if you had this 45 flip flop and the water was coming this way, it would have a tendency to run into. That's why it's very important to get a good tight 45 uh, butted up together. It gets to drip right off if it touches the fascia board. But hopefully it won't touch the fascia board because now we're having, uh, see this drip edge? The strip edge is not long enough. 
it goes right up against the furring strip right here. And what happens is the water will come down this uh, drip edge and uh, it, it, it'll suck back into the uh, furring strip and the fascia board and it'll run off the fascia board. You don't want that. You actually want the, uh, when you have a roof put on, you want the uh, drip edge hanging over, over the furring strip. That way the water won't run against the uh, fascia board here. Now we're having a, a three inch drip edge put on and it should hang over the furring strip to uh, maybe a half inch. Hey guys, so I got the fascia board all up. And my next project is to get the uh, gutters up. And here it is right here. Put a little uh, caulk in there. Tighten that joint up some, keep the water out. Caulk that joint there. So it looks pretty good. Hey guys, Fix It John here. Uh, this is what I meant by the uh, drip edge covering the uh, furring strip. You see how you can't see the furring strip? That's the way it should be done. Uh, when it's uh, shorter than the furring strip, the water has a tendency to uh, drip back up under the uh, drip edge and uh, rot out the uh, fascia board. Hey guys, Fix It John here. I know I didn't go into detail about the gutter work, but uh, uh, all it is is uh, it was nailed to uh, the uh, furring strip with uh, roofing nails and uh, just a little short uh, two inch roofing nails. And I used the same, uh, I used the same uh, style nail to uh, nail it back up. And you nail the uh, gutter to the furring strip and then those big long uh, spike like nails, they go through your, uh, you nail those to your furring strip also so your uh, gutter doesn't flop around. So remember guys, this is Fix It John. If this uh, fascia board video helped you in any way, like and subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.